Quadratic functions in vertex four. So we're going to continue on with them. Uh, continue learning to just sketch the graphs of a parabola in vertex form by understanding the meaning of A, H, and K. Okay, how do they help you draw the graph? Learning how to compare the graphs of y equals ax minus h squared plus k to the graph of the parent function y equals x squared using the transformation language. So continuing that from yesterday. And then we're going to add in the talk of maximum, oops, there we go, the talk of maximum and minimum values, which we only kind of just spoke about. We didn't do any work on it yesterday. Okay? And how to tell what it is. So given the equation of a quadratic function in vertex form, the investigation we did told us that the vertex should be hk. And the step pattern should be either up, 1 times 3, or 1 times a, sorry, 3 times a, 5 times a, or down. 1 times a, 3 times a, 5 times a. And it's up if a is, if a is positive. And it'll be down if a is negative. So similar to a line where if we knew where the y-intercept was, we knew what the slope was, we could draw the line. For a parabola, if we know where the vertex is and we know what the step pattern is, we could draw the parabola. Okay? So those are the things you want to be able to tell from the equation. What's the vertex? What's the step pattern? You know that. Here, you've got it. Okay? So we're going to practice that. Start off right at the beginning. Sketch each parabola. And then we're also going to determine if it has a maximum or minimum value and what the maximum or minimum value is. So the first one, y equals 2x minus 4 squared minus 5. So just from the equation, see if you could write down what the vertex is. Just from the equation, see if you could write down what the vertex is. And remember, the equation we're comparing it to is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. It's on the chart paper. It's up here. And we know the vertex is hk. Anyone think they know the vertex for this one? Hayden? Uh, 4, negative 5. 4, negative 5. How many people thought it was 4, negative 5? Okay, any questions on how to get either the 4 or the negative 5 from the equation? We're good? Okay, so let's plot it. So from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 is low. Five is down here. So there is my vertex. So what about my step pattern? It's all based off this number out front. So that, is it going to be up or down? Up because it's positive. And because it's a 2, it's going to be up 1 times 2, which is 2. 3 times 2, which is 6. 5 times 2, which is 10. If we had room, it would be like 7 times 2, which is 14. Okay? So from here, we're going to go over 1, up 2 on both sides because it's symmetric around the vertex. Okay, and then over one up, one, two, three, four, five, six on both sides. And then over one up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, can't fit that. So we're almost there. Try to draw it in with a smooth curve, arrows on the end. Okay, does this one have a highest point or a lowest point? A lowest? Everyone agree it never gets lower than the vertex? Okay, it never gets down here? That's called a minimum. 
So this one has a minimum value of, so what's the lowest it ever gets? Negative 5. Where do you see negative 5 in the equation? The k value. So keep that in mind, the k value ends up being the minimum in this case. Let's see if that holds up, okay? All right, the next one, y equals a half x squared plus 2. See if you can write down what the vertex is based off the equation. What does it mean when there's no brackets? Anyone? What does it mean when there's no brackets? No. Means there must have been a zero in there, right? Because x minus zero is x. So it means the h should be zero when there's no brackets. So if there's no brackets, it means h is zero. And what's k? Two. So your vertex should be zero, two. Okay? So let's plot that vertex out, 0, 2, right on the y-axis. And what's our step pattern? Oops. That comes from the number out front. So the negative sign tells us that it's down. And then the half tells me to multiply 1, 3, and 5 by a half. So 1 times a half is 0. 0.5. 3 times a half is 1.5. 5 times a half is 2.5. Okay. And then if I have room, you can see the pattern 0. 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, that would be 3.5 next. So I'm going to use a different color here so we don't get confused. So from here, we're going to go over one and down half. So we're in this little halfway spot here. Okay. And then from here, we're going to go over one and down one and a half. So over one, down, there's my half. One and a half puts me on a corner again on both sides. Then I'm going to go over one down one, two and a half, which puts me there in the halfway again. And I've still got room, so I'm going to go over one down one, two, three and a half, which puts me on a corner. And I've still got room, so I'm going to go over one down four and a half. And then I ran out of room. And does this one have a highest point or a lowest point? Highest, everyone agree? It never, it never gets higher than this point here, the vertex. So that's called a maximum. So it's maximum value. is, so it never gets higher than 2, and again that turns out to be the k value. Given the values of a, h, and k for a quadratic in vertex form, construct its equation and sketch its graph. Determine if it has a maximum or minimum value and what the maximum or minimum value is. So again, uh, we're basing this off the general equation in vertex form, and we just want to put a, h, and k into their spots. 
Okay, and see what we come up with. So for this specific one, we want to change a to negative one. You can put the one or you can just leave it as a negative sign. Either one's fine. Negative out front or negative one out front means the same. X minus H is two. Don't forget the square. That's what makes it a parabola. Plus K is six. So that would be the equation. And now we want to sketch its graph. So when they give you H and K, it's very easy to get the vertex because you know the vertex is HK. So the vertex has to be 2, 6. But take note, where do you see that in the equation? Here's my H beside the minus sign. And here's my K. Same sign. Okay? So vertex is at 2, 6. Step number is a negative 1. Okay, which means my step pattern is going to be down 1 times 1, which is 1, 3 times 1, which is 3, 5 times 1, which is 5, the regular one, down 1, 3, 5. So you start at your vertex and your step pattern tells you to go over 1, down 1, and then your next step is over 1, down 3. And then your next step is over one down one, two, three, four, five. And then your next step would be down seven if it fits. It does. Okay, so we drew our parabola. It says, now determine if it has a maximum or minimum value and what it is. So does this one have a highest point or a lowest point? Highest again, so it's a maximum. Maximum value of 6. It never gets higher than 6. And again, that turns out to be the K value. So hopefully you're noticing the pattern that it's always the k value is either the maximum or the minimum. Okay? The k value is either the maximum or minimum. And then how do you know if it's a maximum or a minimum? If a is negative, you have a maximum. If a is negative, you have a maximum. If A is positive, you have a minimum. Okay? Yep. Or you just look at the value if it's a negative minimum. No. You could have a negative value that's a maximum. Like if I, if I gave you this equation, Y equals um, 3X minus 2, sorry, negative 3. negative 3x minus 4 squared minus 1, you have a maximum, because this is negative, but the maximum would be negative 1. You see that? Okay, next one gives you a, h, and k. So build your equation given that a, h, and k, and see what you get. And you're way ahead of me. Zoom in. So you're inserting these values into this general equation. So I'm going to replace A with 2. Minus negative 3, so the minus from the formula, the negative 3 from the H, but would I leave it as minus negative 3? No, I would change that to a plus, okay? 
And then plus zero, do I need to show the plus zero? No. So those are the refinements I would make once I just substitute it in. Okay? And we know the vertex because we were given H and K is at negative 3, 0. Okay? So we should be getting a negative 3 from inside the bracket and a 0 from outside. Negative 3, 0. So negative 3, 0 is over here. And my step pattern comes from this number. It's positive, so it's up. 1 times 2, which is 2. 3 times 2, which is 6. 5 times 2, which is 10. So from here, we go over 1, up 2. Over 1, up 6. And we can't fit the 10. That one has this word text right on the x axis. And does this one have a maximum or a minimum value? Minimum, lowest point, everybody? Good? Yep. Okay, so the minimum is zero. Minimum value is zero. And where do we see that in the equation? Minimum is because this is positive, and the value is because k is zero. There's no number out there. Okay? Given the equation of a parabola, how can you determine the maximum or minimum value? So if you're just looking at a regular equation, how would you know whether it has a maximum or minimum? Yep. K is the maximum or minimum value. And it's a maximum if A is positive, right? No, sorry. If A is negative. Maximum A is negative. And value is K. And for a minimum, a is positive, and the value is k. So it doesn't matter whether it's a maximum or a minimum, the value is going to be k. A tells you whether it is a maximum or a minimum. Okay? So now we have a little chart that's kind of going to see if we know what that, how to tell the maximum or minimum value here. So direction of opening means, does it look like that or does it look like that? Okay, and this means it opens up and this means it opens down. Okay, so the first one, does it open up or open down? Up. Okay, so it looks like this, which means it's going to have a lowest point, which is a minimum. And the minimum value is the k value, which is 3. Okay? The next one, a is negative, so it opens down, which means it's going to have a maximum. And the maximum value is? Seven, okay. The next one opens down because A is negative, which means it's going to have a maximum or a highest point, and the highest is going to be negative two, okay? The K. The next one, positive A, so it opens up which means it's going to have a lowest point or a minimum. And the minimum is the K, but I don't see any number there for the K. That means the minimum would be zero. 
That's like a plus zero that you don't see. Okay? Next one, it's got a negative A, so it opens downward, which means it's going to have a maximum value, highest point, and the maximum value is 84. And the last one, A is positive, so it opens upward. So it's got a lowest point or a minimum value of 5. Okay? So that question was showing whether you can tell just based on the equation whether it has a max or a minimum value and what the maximum or minimum value is. Okay, look at each graph and determine the values of A, H, and K. State the equation of the quadratic. And now we're going to look at the graph and try to tell the equation. So the first thing you can do is figure out the coordinates of the vertex because that's going to be your H and K. So right off the graph, read what the vertex is. So your vertex is positive 4. And then up, 8, that means that H is 4 and K is 8, okay? And then we want to see what happens here. When we go over 1, we go down 1. Can see that? So if, it's, if I'm thinking that A is negative 1, what should happen on my next step? I should go over 1 and down how many? Three. One, two, three. Yes, it works. And then if I even want to try again, my next step I should go over one and down. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So that means since I'm going downward, A is negative one. Got the one, three, five, but it's negative. So if I want to make the equation, it's based off this one. And I just need to insert the number for A, the number for H, and the number for K into the general formula. Okay? So it's going to be Y equals negative 1 or just negative, your choice. X minus 4 bracket squared plus 8 because it's positive 8. Okay, so that's the equation, and that's what we had to do for that one. Okay, try the next one. Figure out A, A, two, K, and see if we can figure out the equation. interesting ways people are doing it that are kind of cool. So we've got people doing the vertex first. Negative 2, 4. Awesome. And now they're saying H is negative 2, K is 4, just labeling it. Then I have people actually writing down the steps, which is cool. So they see over 1. But if I go over 1, I only go down go down, that's good, half. Everyone see that? If you go over one, you only go down a half. If you go over one again, you go down one and a half. So that's a half, 
that's one and a half. And then if you go over one again, you go down two and a half. Which means that A must be negative because it's down half. Okay? And then you've got to make the equation. So now you know A, H, and K. You have to put them in to the correct spots in the general formula. So every one that you make is going to have a Y, an X, and a squared. So we're going to replace A with negative one half bracket X minus negative two bracket squared plus four. That's not how I leave it because minus negative isn't considered simplified. So I'm going to change the minus negative to a plus, and that would be my equation. Okay. Right, and try C. The vertex. Figure out the step pattern, which is going to help you get the step number. Remember, you're always going over one for your step. get those A, H, and K's. Thank you. 
B, C, and D. One of those is the vertex. Put up your hand if you think it's A. Yes, it's A. Okay, so X minus H. H must be 4. Good. And K stays the same. And what is the step number? Or what is the step pattern? Sorry. Negative sign means down. And then 1, 3, and 5 multiplied by 2. So 2, 6, and 10. So you've got a plot 4 and 8. And then from your vertex, you're going to go over 1, down 2 on both sides. Over 1, down 6 on both sides. And over 1, down 10 on both sides. Okay, now we're trying to remember those transformation words. There should be four. See if you can figure out all four transformations. So all the ways it's different from the blue one, the original. Yep. Yep. Who's got one way at one end using the correct transformation word? Yeah, Kaden? Vertical reflection. Okay, that's how you say it's flipped upside down. It's a vertical reflection. Okay, another one. Yep, Patrick? Uh, vertical, stretch by a factor of two. vertical stretch by a factor of two. So you do vertical stretch, semicolon, and then you say how much are the steps changing by? They're doubling, so that's by a factor of two. So instead of the regular steps, one, three, five, we're doubling them to two, six, ten. So that's called a vertical stretch by a factor of two. Okay, another one? How do we talk about moving the vertex? Mm -hmm. Horizontal shift. Perfect. Horizontal shift. So that's moving the vertex left or right. And we said right four. So you say horizontal shift is the name of it. And then specifically for this one, we went to the right four. Okay? And then moving it up or down, that's called a vertical shift. And then specifically for this one, we moved it up 8. So we changed the vertex from 0, 0 to 4, 8. Okay, by moving it right and up the vertex. Everyone see that? Okay, those are transformation words. Four of them. Okay, next question. Determine the equation of the parabola given the following clues. Sketch the parabola. So the axis of symmetry is along the line x equals negative 3. So there's my axis of symmetry, which Everyone agree that the vertex is going to be somewhere on the axis of symmetry? So that clue is also telling me that the h value is negative 3. Okay? h is negative 3. Because I know my vertex is going to be on here. So the h coordinate or the x coordinate of my vertex is going to be negative 3. So that clue gives me that valuable piece of information. The value of a is negative one half, so now I know a and h. And the maximum value is four. What's that telling me? 
k because maximum or minimum values are always k values. So now I know a, h, and k. So I can substitute them into the general equation and get the equation of the parabola. So I can say replace a with negative a half x bracket x minus h is negative 3 bracket squared plus 4. So that's just subbing in a, h, and k into the general formula. And the only thing that I can't leave is the two minuses in a row. I have to change that to a plus. Okay? So my vertex is at H, K, so negative 3, 4. And my step number is negative a half. So that tells me that I'm going down. And then my steps are 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5. Okay? One times a half, three times a half, five times a half, etc. So from my vertex, I go over one down a half on each side, then over one down one and a half, then over one down two and a half, then over one down three and a half. Then over one down one, two, three, four and a half. And then I've drawn it. And then I would always look back at the clues and make sure that it makes sense according to the clues that I was given. Okay? So I would say, is the axis of symmetry along x equals negative three? Yes. Is the value of a negative a half? Yes. Is the maximum value 4? Yes. So I've drawn it in agreement with the clues that I was given. Okay? All right. Next one. The parabola y equals x squared has undergone the following transformations. It's been vertically stretched by a factor of 2. Vertically shifted down 7, and the axis of symmetry is along x equals 4. Determine the equation of the image function and sketch its graph below. So I'm just going to give you time to think about it. Okay. So I've seen people drawing the axis of symmetry along x equals 4. I'm saying that h is 4. Correct. Um, vertically stretched by a factor of 2. That clue says that A is, well, it's either positive 2 or negative 2, but I'm not, we are not sure of that yet. Okay, it's positive 2 or negative 2. Vertically shifted down 7 units. It doesn't say it's vertically reflected, so I guess we know it's positive 2. Um, vertically shifted down seven units, so that means k is negative seven down seven units. K is negative seven, so if we put those together, our vertex is at four negative seven. And our step number is it's vertically stretched by a factor of 2. Then we're going up 2, 6, 10, raise 2. And I can't fit the last one in. And then you want to put them into your general format. Okay. 
a is 2 bracket x minus 4 bracket squared minus 7. And they can just leave it up. So that's just equation. And we want to make sure we can sketch a parabola from this form. I really want you to leave today thinking that doesn't matter how I present this equation, you could sketch it. You would be able to tell the vertex and the step number and draw it. Okay? Given the graph, you can determine a, h, and k, and then make the equation. You can describe in words the transformations. Okay, we did a lot of that yesterday, but uh, and a little bit of it today, but there's some in the practice. So if you need help with those words, uh, please ask. Um, tell whether two parabolas are congruent. Does anyone know what the word congruent means? Exact same shape. Very good. So we talked about that yesterday. If we're going to cut one out and put it over top of the other, would it fit exactly on top of it? If it does, they're congruent. If it doesn't, if there's a stretch or a compression, then they're not congruent, okay? And you can tell the maximum or minimum value. We went over that with the chart, okay? So if A is positive, it has a minimum of K, and if A is negative, it has a maximum of K. All right, 